Hello fellow book fans, this is Gabby and today we're talking about my auto buy offers. <music> So, if you don't know, auto buy offers are just offers that write a book and magically my wallet just opens up and is like, please take all my money. So this list is funny because I said in my auto buy offers and some of these I've read all of their books and I'm gonna read all of their books, but some of them I still have a backlist that technically I should get to, but it doesn't matter if I read all of their books. If they're coming up with a new one, I will buy it. That's the rules, I don't make them except that I do. And yeah, usually if the offer is auto buy, it's one of my favorite offers and I never expect the hell out of them and they're amazing. So I don't know if that needs to be said, but yeah. Uh, we have 10 offers I want to talk about today. I don't think like I have many indie darlings here, like probably all of them, you know, but some of them I feel like deserve my hype. So we're going to talk about them and we're going to discuss and you need to pop your auto buy offers down below because if someone's your auto buy offer, that's like another level of stamp of approval, you know? So the first offer I want to talk about is Alex E. Harrow. So she's the author of 10,000 Notes of January and Once in Future Witches. And as far as I'm aware, these are her only two books that are out currently. She's written a new book called Splintered Spindle, I think, which is a beauty, Sleeping Beauty retelling, which is not out yet, but it's out sometime soon. And I have it, well, not sometime soon, it's out in like sometime this year. I have it on my to be our one to buy will buy as soon as it comes out list and i think arcs are out there and i just don't have them so that's depressing um but maybe one day if you want to subscribe get me big enough so that i can get alex iharo's arcs i die happy but yeah these two books are both amazing this one is about a girl who finds a door to different dimensions and it's like a polter 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 portal fantasy and this one is about three sisters who are all witches and it's about the suffragette movement both amazing what i particularly like about her writing is how flowery it is it's really purple really beautiful but it's also not so purple that you can't like understand what's happening i really really love the themes in her book so far it's been about family both times and about belonging and i just really really enjoy that and i cannot wait for her new book i think it's gonna be so good just the fact that it's like sleeping beauty but i'm sure it's gonna have themes and writing and everything you might want from it so i just cannot wait and alexi hyra i love her so much like this book was actually her debut so she, this is only her third book that she's ever written if your debut is this strong where you go from there you know next up we have probably a no-brainer but it's laney taylor so laney taylor if you don't know she's the author of the daughter of smoke and bone trilogy as well as a strange the dreamer duology so i've read all of these books and i am now rereading them this series is about karu who is just a girl living in prague having a good time with her friends but also her family is a bunch of chimera who are like animal slash humanoid creatures and she collects teeth for a living it's all amazing it's a wonderful wonderful urban slash high slash low fantasy i don't know like portal fantasy i guess and this is amazing her other book strange the dreamer i need to buy i did actually read the first book um which is amazing it's about lasso strange who's always dreamed about city of weep and city of weep was a city that's name disappeared from people consciousness and now it's kind of felt to be a myth but laszlo has always believed in it he's done all this research and he really 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 wants to find it one day and he gets opportunities to go visit and it's just wonderful again laney taylor she has amazing writing it is quite purple it's especially in stranger dreamer not so much in um daughter of smoke and bone i wouldn't say but stranger dreamer is very very poetical lyrical and i her storytelling is just so beautiful and heartbreaking she not she is not the kind of author to be like scared to make her characters suffer she's not the kind that wouldn't kill them even if that's the most effective way for the narrative to move forward and the most impactful thing you can do she will do whatever she needs to do to get you to get the emotion and i think the way she writes about pain and beauty is just so so beautiful i need to read the sequel to stranger dreamer and she's coming out with a new book but there's no like 
release date for it yet so I need to her to hurry up because it's been years but she's an amazing amazing writer I really really love her storytelling yeah I think she's just like gonna smash it out with the new book I just cannot wait okay next up we have the queen of my heart who's so underrated it can be it makes me angry and that's Amanda Foodie who's the author of Ace of Shades trilogy so Amanda Foodi uh, like I said she wrote the Ace of Shades trilogy which is kind of like like a high fantasy set in the city of sin and we have a young girl who needs to find her mother and she abandons her comfortable life in order to find and rescue her mother it's beautiful it's like it has queer characters so much representation I love it to bits every other book was better than the one before it it's just impossibly amazing i don't know how she's not like super super famous i mean i guess she's popular but i never see anyone put these books on her like fa their favorite list and these are some of my all-time favorite fantasies she's also written daughter of the burning city which i have not read but i do want to check out eventually i think it's just a standalone i don't really know what it's about and she's now written a middle grade novel that I, again, have not read. I am kind of interested. I'm not a big on middle grade, but I know there's a new round of uh, Believe is Found coming out in November. So I'm thinking I'm going to save it for them because I want to read all of her books. She's just such an amazing writer. I guess what I love about her writing is just so high stakes. Again, she's not scared to like hurt you and the characters. She's really, really good at that. I wouldn't say her prose is particularly purple or anything but she is a really good writer her writing is just so like so absorbent and you really really care for it i love how complex the characters were and her relationships between characters as well just so well done and just in general i think she did a really good job everything felt so high stakes and you always just like want to keep reading want to get more whenever she comes up with like an adult or young adult series i'm buying it because it's gonna be so amazing i just i just know it i feel it in my bones it's gonna be amazing okay next up we have chloe gong who is the author of these violent delights um i have a full spoiler video with reviewing that book if you want to check it out but she's actually a very recent debut i think she when did she debut she debuted it was somewhere around september i think this with these Violent Delights, her first book, which was a Romeo and Juliet retelling set in Shanghai, 1920s Shanghai, I believe. And the main character is an Asian girl and the main guy is Russian. And it's like a, the Romeo and Juliet aspect is the war between their gangs. And that book was really, really good. I really, really, really enjoyed it. I thought it was really well written, really compelling with the themes. The writing was really good as well. Now she's coming out with the sequel, which is called These Violent Ends, which I cannot wait. Everyone has a bloody arc except for me like that's what it feels like at least um so i'm really really excited for it i cannot wait i think it's going to be a very strong very strong uh, continuation but she again really really good writer i thought her prose was really really good again not overtly purpley if that's not your thing um but definitely interesting and very interesting characters really compelling relationship tension all of that was really really good so first of all i would recommend that book and maybe it's built with someone who's only one book you read but i think whatever she comes up with i will pick up and give it a shot just because i really like her um just as an author as well i'm not sure how old exactly she is but i think she's in her very early 20s she's around my age like 22 23 24 somewhere along those lines and she actually wrote her first book as a student she has studying at uni like i studied at uni it's not that easy to just have some time to re write a book and i just really really admire that and i also follow her on twitter and she's always really funny and really um vocal about issues so i don't know i just enjoy her as a person i enjoy her writing so i'm definitely gonna pick up more of her books next to the list is libba bray so libba bray is the author of the diviner series um which is like set in 1920s and it's about this group of misfits who all have some kind of power like for example reading objects or walking in dreams that kind of thing and they have to stop a series of more murders happening in new york i read that from her and i also read beauty queens which is a standalone novel is kind of like absurdist but also um i guess like an action no i don't really know what like a thriller but it's not really a thriller i don't know how you would categorize it as but it's about the this plane full of beauty queen contestants going into a pageant and the plane crashes on a deserted island and they have to survive on the deserted island so it's kind of like a spin on the lord of flies but like really funny and like just absurdist to the point of being brilliant and i think just in general the, the diviners also really amazing series i 
I've read almost all of the books except for the last one so to finish up the series. I know Reba Bray has really amazing atmospheric writing. I should listen to all of her books instead of re reading them physically but both of the audiobooks were absolutely amazingly executed. I loved Beauty Queens. I think you have to listen to the audiobook. It's so good. It's just absurd in the best way possible. And then Diviner is also really amazing with the 1920s music and the atmosphere really, really, really well performed. So if she comes up with any new book, I might pick up the audiobook, you know? I'm like, she's got amazing audiobooks. Um, and just in general, I really like her as a person as well. Like I listened to an interview with her after Beauty Queens and she talked about how she was in a car accident, which was really like hard. And it, she had to have operation done on her face and all that and how, the recovery really made her like reflect on beauty standards and that kind of thing so I don't know I just really like people who authors who like to um, go deeper and tell you stuff, very personal stories like that I think it's wonderfully beautiful and yeah I really love Leva Bray I think she's an amazing writer and I cannot wait for her new book I don't know if she's coming up with anything but I'm, I'm buying it if she is next up is the only non-fantasy writer on this list. I'm sorry, I'm a fantasy reader, but it's Ruth Ware. So I only read one Ruth Ware book, but it was The Turn of the Key. And she's, like I said, she's a non-fantasy reader. She writes thrillers and she's written a very new book, a book very recently called One by One. And The Turn of the Key was really so well written that I want to pick up every thriller she writes. I just think she's very good writing at writing like tension and thrillers. I was a bit disappointed with the ending so I'm hoping one by one will uh, redeem that. Turn of the key. It's a retelling of the turn of the screw and we follow a nanny who gets a job in this like rich people's house to take care of the children but the house is like super smart house you can like turn on the lights and everything basically with a button and she starts experiencing some very creepy things happening in the house and we don't know if it's paranormal what's happening and then one by one is like a isolation thriller i think there's like a bunch of co-workers that go on a trip together and then they get stuck there's like an avalanche or something they get stuck in like a cabin in the middle of nowhere i think it's like a ski resort or something and then I think murders happen. I really need to pick it up. I'm really excited. I The reason I picked her because I don't know I just enjoy her thriller so much. It did all the things I like in thriller so I thought I probably will enjoy anything she writes. I don't know maybe one by one will break this opinion. I have but I definitely do need to pick it up soon. I said it's auto by authors. I didn't say I will read the books quickly. I just said I will buy them quickly. <laughs> Next author is R.F. Kuang who's the author of the Poppy War trilogy. I only have the first two books because the last one I think it still hasn't come out in paperback so I'm just waiting for the paperback to come to me so I can binge read the whole series um but i only read the first book but let me tell you this is one of the most amazing books i've ever read this was prop i think it was my favorite book of 2020 it's a military fantasy where we follow ren who's our main character and she is she's an orphan and she's been like adopted by the this awful couple and they basically say that she has to marry this old man she knows that it's either marrying this old man or she gets to go to a military academy but to, in order to go she has to pass this really really hard test and like prove her worth that way but the writing was amazing and the tension building and I really love how R.F. Kwan does her research so this was based on um, the rape I think the first book and the, there were events that were based on the rape of Nanking uh, which was when the Japanese forces invaded China I believe and they just did horrific crimes this is really about cost of war personal costs like national costs cost to the innocent and just like how disgusting war is it doesn't glor glorify it in any way I don't think and it's really meaningful story really heartbreaking there's some scenes that are very very triggering if you have experience with sexual assault so I would be careful of that but otherwise like the writing was just exquisite and I love how much it was steeped in like real events I really like that like the retelling of history um uh, borrowing from history that kind of thing I think it's really 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 amazing and she's now writing a new novel called Babel and it's like a dark academia uh so I'm super excited for that one uh yeah the, the title just came out and I don't think the premise is even that much out I just know it's dark academia I'm not sure but I'm super excited for that one because I know if she's also done tons of research for this one so I think it's just really really cool yeah I just like her approach and I also she was also one of the youngest offers that I read because she was then 19 years old I think when her first book came out and she's studying masters I believe so she's still at uni and I just think like the amount of talent and dedication and just 
it's breathtaking and I really always wish her well and I'm gonna read anything she puts out even if I'm like not really interested in topic topic I think she can make it out of the water blue out of the water amazing or whatever so I'm definitely picking up everything she ever writes the next author is ML Wong who's the author of the sort of Kai Yen and the Fionite Wolf, Fionite trilogy, I think it's called, or series, whatever. So this author, actually, she has a lot of, well, not a lot, but she has a series in her back garden, no, backstage, no, backlist, in her backlist. So she wrote this teeth. Tail Knight trilogy, which I think it's for some girl who has to pretend she has no powers, but I didn't read any of them and I'm not sure I will because that series I think was discontinued, at least that's what I've heard. Um, but then Sword of Kai again is set in the same universe, but it's a so totally separate story, it's standalone. And this was such a good book, I think one of my favorite books of this I read this year, maybe the favorite one. I love this book. This follows Misaki, who's a mother, she's the wife to like a local hero basically his whole family is considered like to be amazing warriors and she's like i said the wife to him she's got several sons but she used to be a warrior actually and it's about her like coming to terms with the fact that she's no longer a warrior she's like a mother figure and it's about her sons as well coming to their own legacy because their family is known for being amazing warriors so they have a lot to live up to but it's about so much more as well it's about honor and like sacrifice and coming together as partners as family i just love this book so much i read it on kindle and i bought a physical copy immediately i just needed to have it because i will read this very soon hopefully and i will reread it over and over because there's so much to gain from it i love this author's style of writing it wasn't overtly purple or anything but it was just so captivating the way she wrote fight scenes i've never cared that much about what fight scene before like i'm not a big fight scene reader like whatever but like she did an amazing job just so so well done and she's coming out with a new book which just makes me so freaking happy i am at incredibly excited for her new book whatever it's going to be about i'll read it um this actually has a lot of like japanese inspirations in terms of culture and mythology so if that's something you're into it will totally pick up sort of kai again it's self-published which is really cool and i think her next book probably will be self-published as well but like the talent the raw pure under the unadulterated talent of this author is just like everything only two left next up on the list is samantha shannon who's the author of the bone season series as well as the prior of the orange tree book it's a standalone so i actually own the, these two in the series and then i own prior of the orange tree as well but it's up in the attic i'm not getting it bone season i think was her debut again she was like 19 when she published it and she like uh, tradition published and everything so are all all the previous authors that i said did it young they're all tradition published i don't know what that would matter but it's um so this series is kind of like a dystopian sci-fi novel a little bit uh we live in a world where there are these people called clairvoyants and they have superpowers but it's been a very long time i've, I've read this the first book because i need to continue the series so the protagonist is Paige mahoney she gets She's a clairvoyant and she gets in trouble. I don't want to say more because it's kind of spoilery. And then Prior of the Orange Tree is like that massive, massive, massive book you see. It's like this thick. It's like very thick. And it's about warring kingdoms, lesbian queens and dragons. Do you need to know more? No, you don't. I did enjoy Priory of the Orange Tree quite a lot. I listened to the audiobook and it definitely took me a very long time because the book is so long. So I do want to eventually read it physically and hoping that this will really make me absorb the story even more. But I really, really love the bone season. I especially like, I don't know, it just gave me this nostalgia feeling of I can't stop reading and I really like that. Also, doesn't doesn't my aesthetic fit in with it today quite a lot? I actually met Samantha Shannon and she was so lovely. Well, I met her on her signing for her book and I also met her for signing for Jay Kristoff's book. And yeah, she was wonderful. I really enjoyed the interview for her, for her signing. I really enjoyed the interview for that. And I thought she had so many really good points and I let follow her on Twitter again. And I feel like she's a really, really cool person that I really want to support so that's why i'm always buying her books and the last entry the last offer that i'm always gonna buy their books is madeline miller so i read cersei and i've not read the achilles 
Achilles, Song of Achilles, yeah, that's a good Song of Achilles. Um, so I read Cersei, so that's not what she's an author or she's known for being a author of like Greek re myth retellings. Cersei is retelling the myth of Cersei. Um, she was a character in the Odyssey, and it's like a witch a little bit. And then Song of Achilles is retelling of um the myth of Achilles. Cersei was so amazing. It's just the type of book that's probably not for everyone. It's very slow. It's very deliberate. It's very beautiful. It's definitely purple prose. Um, the author has amazing writing style that I really, really enjoy. I love her storytelling. I loved Cersei because I felt like Cersei is an immortal character and I just felt the years go by and the burden of immortality, the burden of being a god. There's just something so indescribable about it, but it was so well done. I love, love, love Cersei. I'm gonna read Son of Achilles when I'm mentally prepared for crying because I've heard amazing things about it. I don't know what she's writing next, but I really hope it's coming soon because I'm so excited. Again, what I read about, I like about her writing is how purple and beautiful it is, but also how hauntingly like thought-provoking it is there's just so many things i love about it and i would highly highly recommend all of her works i cannot wait for her next book i hope better come soon okay so these are all the authors i've realized there's not there's just women on it so a list of favorite women authors i guess but yeah these are all the auto buy authors authors whose new book i will always pick up and i will always give it a chance because i think they're just absolutely amazing and all of their works are so amazing and they're all amazing women who you should totally support so to go go do that and in the comments tell me your auto buy authors i want to know I want to find more of mine so the next time I make this list I have 10 new ones you know yeah let me know if you enjoyed the video if you did you could comment like and subscribe it really really does help me out and I really appreciate it that's it from me and I'll see you in my next video bye